Good happy Thursday morning, everyone. I'm Riley King, and welcome to the Riley King Newscast, right here on the Riley King Network. Let's begin. First up, AG investigation into St. Paul's School leads to arrest of former teacher. Let's take a listen to the video from WMUR News 9. A lot of benefits for the North Country, the jobs, the tax base, the infrastructure, the upgrade to the Coas Loop is, people just do not understand how big this is. David Pook was arrested at his home in Warner this morning, accused of communicating with a former student about what she would tell a grand jury when questioned. Mr. Pook and an individual who was a former student at the school have engaged in a ongoing sexual relationship. Cannot tell you at this juncture when it began, but can tell you that they had contact uh, during the process. Uh, during the process when the grand jury was convened. Investigators say Pook and the former student had email conversations, including one three days before her grand jury appearance, where Pook is accused of saying, just want to say that if you wanted to review what we've been talking about at any time, I'd always make time for you. Obviously, a lot rests on it. Subpoenaed records reveal complaints about Pook from students at the prep school dating back to 2002, including making students uncomfortable when entering rooms while they got ready for bed. He argued as the head of house in a girl's dorm, it was his job. He left under what the attorney general calls questionable circumstances in 2008, but the next year was given a positive review when the Dairyfield School called St. Paul's about hiring him. If there are individuals out there who have information about St. Paul's conduct of any teachers, conduct of Mr. Pook in particular, that they know that they can come forward and report that to the Attorney General's office. In an email provided to News 9, the Dairyfield School says it has terminated David Pook and will offer counseling when school resumes on Monday. He was also suspended from his teaching job at Granite State College. Live in studio, Gene Mackin, WMUR News 9. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. Massachusetts town ask for voluntary evacuations ahead of major storm. Let's take a listen to the video from WCVB. Boston. Here we go again. Less than two months after Situate and neighboring communities were battered by a powerful January storm that damaged the seawall and caused serious flooding, a new storm is in the forecast for Friday and Saturday. We anticipate this is going to be much worse flooding than we had in January. Situate resident Alicia Chick hasn't even had a chance to fix her deck destroyed in the last storm. She evacuated back then and will be leaving even earlier this time. We're packing up our kids and our dogs and we're, we're going to get out. Situate's police chief asking all residents in flood-prone areas to evacuate and not be fooled by today's wonderful weather. We're pretty concerned with some of the weather forecasts and we feel after a day like today, a lot of people might not be focused on it. Duxbury fire officials also asking some residents to voluntarily evacuate, but if rescues are needed, Duxbury fire officials will have a new high water rescue vehicle to use. This will allow us to get into those areas that have very deep water um, that we can't access with our normal vehicles. Despite the new truck in Duxbury and a repaired seawall in Situate, officials say these things can only do so much to help during a storm that will affect not one, but three tides. I don't think people realize when you have more than one tide event and the wind is blowing from the ocean, that water doesn't recede between tides. The wind's going to hold that water on shore, and then the next tide is going to come in and add to it, and then the next tide is going to come in and add to it. 
Now, officials in Situate are also warning residents that a lot of debris could be washed up during this storm, telling those residents they may not be able to get back home for several days. Live in Situate this evening, Matt Reed, WCVB News Center 5. Okay, there you go on that video and that report. Teen charged with murder of Bodwin him woman. Let's take a listen to the video from WMTW News 8 Maine. Oh, you don't look so hot. Rough night? Ugh. Oh, well, actually that's the problem. You're on antibiotics. Antibiotics can kill the good bacteria as well as the bad. And that's bad news for your tummy. Unless you use Floristore. Unlike many other probiotics, it's naturally resistant to antibiotics and protects the good bacteria in your body. So, take some Floristore. Doctors, well, my orders. Be biotic and drink plenty of fluids. Megan, not much else. In fact, we officials haven't even released the name of this boy, but they do believe that he caused the injuries that led to Marie Sylvester's death. Now, this teen was arrested after being released from Mid Coast Hospital this afternoon, where he had been admitted on Monday. The cause of death has also not been released at this time, but we do expect to get more information when he makes his first court appearance on Friday. Now, tonight we spoke with several neighbors and even the owner of the trailer that Marie Sylvester lived in, all those neighbors in agreement that this is an incredibly sad situation and unfortunate to have it happen so close to home. Live in South Portland tonight, Aaron Dixon, WMTW News 8. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. Moving on without America, huge Pacific trade deal isn't waiting around for the U.S. More than a year since President Donald Trump threw a wrench into a free trade deal once pegged as the world's largest remaining countries have finally commented a new agreement without the United States. Judge breached by Trump rules in favor of border wall waivers. The federal judge, President Donald Trump, attacked during the campaign claiming the judge's Mexican heritage and Trump's call for the border wall made him extremely hostile, has ruled in favor of administration efforts to speed up building that wall along the southern border. On Tuesday, USA District Judge Guanamalza Carl dismissed arguments from several environmental groups that alleged the Trump administration violated the Constitution and has gone beyond its authority when the Department of Homeland Security issued waivers to build along the southwest border in order to expedite construction, DHS issued waivers to numerous laws and regulations, including the Endangered Species Act, the Clear Air Act, and the Safe Drinking Water Act. 
prior to the Trump administration, the last border construction waiver issued by DHS was ordered by Bush era Secretary of Homeland Security M Michael Katowoff in 2008, according to Custom and Border Protection. Trump tweeted about the ruling, referring to Carl only as a U.S. judge. Trump has directly attacked Carl, who also praised over two years of the three lawsuits involving the now defect Trump University. Trump told Fox News last February that Carl had been extremely hostile toward him and alleged with no evidence that Carl was biased against him because of Trump's political positions on immigration. In an interview with CNN last summer, Trump doubled down on his criticism of Carl, saying that his comments were not racist. Trump later walked back his comments, saying in a statement that they were miscontacted as a categorical attack against people in Mexican heritage. Trump added, I do not feel that one's heritage makes them incapable of being implanted, but based on the rulings that I have received in the Trump University silver case, I feel justified in question whether I am receiving a fair trial. Crawl who was born and raised in Indiana, briefly mentioned his U.S. roots in the court order, citing following Indiana Native Chief Justice Roberts when addressing the case surrounded by political argument, agreement, disagreements. Crowell pointed to a statement from Roberts that said, Courts are vast with authorities to impairment the law. We process neither the expertise nor the pre -nortives. to make policy judgments. Those decisions are entrized to our nation's electric leaders who can be thrown out of office if the people disagree with them. And that does it for the Riley King newscast right here on the Riley King Network. I hope you all have a great rest of your day, and I'll see you back here later on today for another newscast. Goodbye, everyone.